This segment is for Moto Influencers to play a real important role. As we look at the social media landscape and you look at TikTok and Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, Facebook, one of the things that's common with all these platforms is they want the user to stay on that platform. Is that as a Moto Influencer, my assumption is that you're doing this to promote businesses, whether it's shout outs or promotions or product placements or whatever it is. The challenge is for most businesses, the consumers don't all stay on one channel, but the collective target market of a given business is most likely on multiple channels. So as, a, in, as an influencer who's only on Instagram or only on YouTube, when it comes to your value that you add for a business, it may be limited, right? So what I recommend you start thinking about is how do you operate on at least two platforms, if not three? And the other thing you can do is have sort of a circle where people can enter from one platform and you bring them to another and then another. So it helps to have a website, right? You can use your website as your repository for content rather than just relying on the platforms, which limits it. And, and those of you who do advertising with Facebook and YouTube, you probably already know what I'm talking about. But that's all I'm gonna say for now. I want you to hear from Michelle. Michelle's a good friend of mine. We used to do lots of great work together when I had the motorcycle rental shop she was in. Michelle, what's the opportunity like for moto influencers? What do you say to that person who's thinking about jumping I in? I absolutely believe that there's enough spotlight to share in the moto industry. I think that it's, and if you think about it, anything could be saturated, but that doesn't mean you can't be successful in it. There are a lot of, a lot more moto influencers since I've started. I've seen it grow exponentially, but it's also one of those things where it's like friendly competition, right? Like you see other influencers and creators doing things and it inspires for, at least for me, it inspires me to keep up my work and stay relevant and, and be creative. You see it and you're like, oh, well, that's really cool. You know, I need to be stepping up my game. And, and, and that just overall creates this whole, I guess, positive effect. There's, of course, there's like that whole other side where social media can become toxic but again it's just really how you look at it there are people who will look at it at pages and just feel discouraged and feel be easily intimidated by things and i think that's where a lot of people realize oh you know this isn't for me or they or quit the whole thing and as positive as the whole influencer thing can be it does come with some bad parts right so there's gonna be haters. There's gonna be like negativity and you just can't let that get to you. You're gonna find that, you're even gonna find that certain friends or even family won't support you as much as you thought that they would. But if you know like your direction and that you have good intentions to, you know, to those around you, just make sure, just keep going. Like, don't let that discourage you. I've seen a lot of people who've done so well with social media influencing and then there will be like a few comments or haters that just completely discourage them and they just quit because they just couldn't handle it. And, you know, don't allow it to become a toxic environment because you're going to be missing out on all the amazing things that you could create. If, but again, I think there's absolutely room to be successful in being an influencer. I mean, every day you just have to be committed to to working or whoever wants to become an influencer of any kind is to just have set goals in mind and make sure that you're consistent in posting good content. And while quality is important, I think it's, it isn't as important as being consistent. There are a lot of people and I've had to struggle with this where I'm like OCD and need things to be perfect. I'll take months to like edit something and I'm like, no, no, this needs to be perfect. This needs to be good. And I'll keep staying at it because of course quality content is always gonna win. But at the same time, if you're not being consistent, then it's better to put out just consistency rather than quality. And one example or some examples of this, I've tested it out throughout my years of, you know, doing the whole moto influencer thing is just, I would spend so much time on an edit and then I'll post it. And then it just, whether it was like timing because I haven't been consistent on my posting, my engagement went lower. You know, I didn't get as many likes or feedback on this video that just took me forever that I hoped for or expected. So then, you know, I did another thing where I tested, I'm just gonna put out content, even though it's not perfect, I'll just make it better the next time and just keep improving. So all of this is trial and error. 
And I saw that once I started being a little bit more consistent, my engagement was high. People were expecting me to post things and you know, I wasn't like disappointing because well, obviously don't put out like crappy, crappy content. But so that's kind of what I noticed coming up with a niche. So have a clear image of who you are, what you want to achieve and why you want to achieve those things. I'm in the motorcycle niche. I want to influence females and provide this whole empowerment thing for females because as, as a woman, like we struggle with different issues in this whole male dominated industry. So I want to be able to provide a place where I can support them and like answer questions when I want, you know, and obviously just show my love and passion for these extreme sports like motorcycling. I just want to inspire people in general that they can be badass, but also embrace their femininity and just embrace who they are. Right? So we want to be able to be prepared and have knowledge and other skills, being able to edit, being able to coach people instead, you know, like they're just making sure that you're well-rounded and being able to provide value in the industry that you want to flourish in. So again, that's, that's another one of my tips is to just make sure that all the content that you put out there provides value to the people who are looking at your content so is it informational like does it teach you something is it entertaining you know does it make the viewers laugh or smile or just is it something that's creative like that's aesthetically pleasing that makes people feel good inside and just like inspired overall you know they just think positivity now i notice you're sort of a beyond influencer you've done commercials with name brands you, you've traveled literally around the world working with other brands. And I, and I think sometimes you get the jobs when you get there and other times you've actually traveled to do the job, but you've done commercials, you've done stunt pieces and movies. How does one move from influencer into that kind of a world? If you love what you do, you're gonna wanna get better. You're gonna wanna practice it all the time. Uh, my Motorcycles are just like my passion and I love riding every single day. And so the result of that is me improving my skills in every in every which way possible so through the grapevine you know and my network people just talk and then you know opportunities just start to open up and it's one of those things where i've missed out on a lot of opportunities but i've also gained a lot of opportunities and i the ones that you miss out on you can't dwell over too much but like also because right you know we're risk takers as motorcycle riders so don't be afraid to take a risk when it comes to opportunity. So when someone offers you something, you know, I never ever thought that I would be doing stunts or being a stunt double in, you know, films or music videos. And when someone offered it to me, it seemed a little intimidating. And I was like, but you know what? I'm just gonna try it. It's good money. It's still something that I love to do. You know, I, I'm so used to like the, oh, moto influencing and just modeling and, and doing brand deals and things. But now I, I'm taking it a step further and actually doing stunts professionally and writing professionally. It's one of those things where you need to just be very motivated and keep yourself in check and your ego in check and everything and make sure that, you know, this is something you want to do and, and something that you love doing.